Okay, a pleasant day, everyone, and welcome to our fourth discussion of uh, this uh, subject, creative nonfiction. And we'll be talking this at this particular time about essay. Okay, so I'm back. So a little bit background, why we need to study as a. So as you draw near to learning the fine points of, uh, that is to say how to distinguish, write and critic CNF, you must first polish your knowledge on the essay. So if you could still remember during your elementary grades, as well as in your junior high school years, you've been, asked okay, or instructed by your English teachers as well as your Filipino teachers to have this what we call formal team, okay? And uh, it's not only really the English, uh, the language subjects who are requiring you to write those, but such we have also the sciences, Araling Panlipunan and other subjects, which really makes sense that until now we are still using the word essay. So after graduation, it is expected for you to write an admission essay, reviews, reaction papers, employment essay, okay, especially when you have, you have a plan to really pursue your college degree later on. So these are the things that I would like to introduce to you that later on you'll be going to prepare as you embark your college years. Okay, so what is essay? So the word essay was being adopted from the French literary corpus when, when 16th century philosopher by the name Michel de Montaigne he described his writings as attempts. So long before it was not yet, the, the name was not yet established as essay. But for Michel de Montaigne, it's attempts. Okay, when you say attempt, you are just planning to write it. Okay, or you're, you're going to apply what you're brand. So attempt. Okay, there, there's no, no product yet. Okay, it's just an attempt. It's just think tank or it's just a thought okay and another thing essay by Michel de Montaigne he began composing it in 1572 and published two volume collection entitled essayists which is in 1580 okay so essay went to England and then we have the, the name Francis Bacon's Essayists. Okay. It was originated from Latin verb exigere, which means to drive out. It's not only in England. It went also as far as the Southeast Asian nation, or the, yes, the Eastern Asia, which includes Japan. Okay. And uh, it was being told that the Japanese literature already had su, Zui Hitsu. Okay, what is the, this Zui Hitsu? Okay, it is being authored by Makura no Soshi, the pillow book. Okay, by Sei Shinagon. So Sei Shinagon was the author of Makura no Soshi, the pillow book. Okay, and it's a sample essay. Okay, actually, Ma, what is this? Makura no Soshi. Actually, the character there is a court lady. The impress concert Teishi already had written a few of these essays. So the court lady started writing her diary at the end of the 10th century. Okay, that's so they believe that here in Asia there, there was already an essay which was being found written by. Makura no Soshi, by, written by Seishinagon 
the thing what the thing is entitled makura no soshi and also of course we'll not be neglecting our own country the philippines okay we have our own version of Aze, which is translated as sanaisai so this was coined by modernist filipino poet and critic alejandro g abadilla in 1938 so it is a portmanteau for a written account of someone who is sanay sa pagsasalaysay or what we call skilled in narration. That's why when you combine sanay sa pagsasalaysay, it becomes sanaysay. So maybe it's a kind of clip word or combination of words to make it one word. Okay, I hope that you get that point. Okay, so binary options. Okay, when we say binary options there are two options okay and that's what we call the prosts the first one is a binary oppositions rather <laughs> the prose is any kind of written text that is not poetry in verse form it is written in paragraphs so normally for prosts they are not written as it's being said is it's not in poetry or in verse form, because when we write form, they are in verse, right? Or in verses. But rather, prose is written in paragraphs. Okay, I believe that you have already known already what is a paragraph. And essay is anything that is not fiction. Okay, that is not fiction, which means it's not, it's not imaginative. They are real. Okay. So some poems labeled as essay, essays. There are also poems which are being labeled as essays. An example of this is Alexander Pope's An Essay on Criticism. We have also by the name Thomas Pinpin. Okay, Thomas Pinpin was Thomas Pinpin. So he wrote the first essay by a Filipino in the country. Actually, his introductory essays serve as a preface to his book, Librong Pag-aaralan ng Mga Tagalog ng Wikang Pastila in 1610. Okay? And then, so when elite Filipinos were educated with the Spanish language, they started writing. The first one is Memorias, Apuntes, or the Memoir. The resenas are resumes, the escribientes, scribes, the informes, accounts, and the memoriales or complaint letters for the locals. So memoriales were written on registered log books, quadernos de quejas, but also Editorials, columns, and features written in Spanish were published in the first chapter newspaper, Aviso al Publico. So Aviso al Publico was the first newspaper published during that time. We have also by the name Aldous Huxley. So he introduced the threefold frame of reference. We have the personal autobiographical, which is the first poll. The second one was objective, factual, concrete, particular. And the third one, which is the abstract or universal. So I just want to read some portions of uh, his study. It says here that most essays are at home and at, and at their best in the neighborhood of only one of the essays, three poles, or at the most only in the neighborhood of two of them. So a writer, or an author could adopt the two or even one pulled frame of reference. It depends on how he manipulates his work. Then there are the predominantly personal essayists who write fragments of reflective autobiography and uh, who look at the world through the keyhole of anecdote and description. So it's really the, about the taste, about the taste of the writer or the author. So preface to the anthology, okay, mga piling sanaysay. Okay, this is, we're in, 
It is being enunciated by Abadilia, edited in 1950. So these are, okay. So the classifications for it are critical, satirical, political, social, historical, philosophical, didactic, spiritual, biography, biographic, inspirational, reminiscent, literary, and humorous. So these are the classifications of mga piling sa naisaya by Abadilia. So we have also this author by the name Genoveva Adrosa Matute. Okay, but before that, formal essays are characterized by philosophical, scientific, or historical treatises. They are impersonal and didactic. So let's get back to Genoveva Adrosa Matute. So she introduced the Piling Maikling Katanang Puling 50 Taon. O labing limang taon. So group, she grouped essays into two categories. What are they? Number one is maanyo, which is another term for that is the formal or impersonal essays. That's in English. The second one is palagayan or the informal slash personal essays. So she grouped essays into two categories, Laman Nyo and Palagaya. Going back to Abadilia, so he divided traditional essays based on style, tone. So tone is a process of approaching a thesis. So later on, I will be expounding or expanding the, the term thesis. It's the style, tone, and the last one is the form and structure. So the form and structure gives a, give a logical arrangement of ideas and events. So actually, the tone of your essay can be formal or personal. It may be diplomatic or sarcastic. Okay. Other elements of the essay include the form and structure, which give a logical arrangement of ideas and events, okay? So in essay writing, you may get confused also with topic, theme, and thesis statement, okay? That's thesis statement. That's what I, I was able to deal on a while back in the topic. What's the difference with the topic, theme, and thesis? That's thesis statement. Okay, so for topic, so it is the subject matter of your essay. Like, for example, you're a student, what are your subjects? Science, English, mathematics, name them all. Okay, how about theme? So themes narrows the topic. Like for example, for science, we have biology, chemistry, physics. Okay, and theme could also be classified to major theme, the central or main idea. Okay, and And when you directly state the main idea, when you directly state the main idea, that's already the, the time you could call it as thesis statement. I'm just sorry with my spelling. Thesis statement. And also another, another thing to consider, it is how you interpret the theme. Another one, it is your personal take or insight. So 
it is your task as the reader or as the author to give the thesis statement, okay? So that's the difference with the topic, the theme. Okay, topic, it's the overall, the subject matter. And then when you go to the theme, so you're going to narrow it, okay? And when the time that you have uh, interpreted the theme, that's already the thesis statement because that, the, that idea will come from you. I am also before the narrative. Okay, so let's proceed here. So the narrative, the structure for a narrative has three parts. We have the beginning, middle, and end. And for essay writing, it has also three main ingredients or format. We have the introduction, body, and conclusion, or the IBC. Okay, so I want you to read the Philippines A Century Hence by Dr. Jose Rizal. So I will just read the first paragraph. It says here, history does not record in its annals any lasting domination exercised by one people over another of different races, of diverse usages and customs, of opposite and divergent ideals. Okay, and the last paragraph, I want you to read that. It says in the last paragraph, therefore we repeat and we will ever repeat while there is time and that it's better to keep pace with the desire of a people than to give way before them. The former begets sympathy and love and the latter contempt and anger. Since it is necessary to grant 6 million Filipinas their rights so that they may be in fact Spaniards, let the government grant these rights freely and spontaneously. Without damaging reservations, without irritating mistress, we shall never tire of repeating this while a ray of hope is left us. For we prefer this unpleasant task to the need of someday saying to the mother country, Spain, we have sent our youth in serving the interests in the interests of our country. We have looked to thee, we have expended the whole light of our intellects, all the fervor and enthusiasm of our hearts in working for the good of what was time, to draw from them a glance of love, a liberal policy, and that would assure us the peace of our native land and thy sway over loyal but unfortunate islands. E, so from that statement alone, so we could we get what Dr. Hasselser Hasserizal need needed to say. Okay, and that is. Uh, we believe that in the context or in the life of uh, Dr. Jose Rizal, he was one of the illustrados who went to Spain really to study. Okay. So I want you to read the whole thing so that you will understand what will be the Philippines a century hence. Okay. so that we could really understand what the thought of Dr. Sarsal, Dr. Sarsal needed to say those times. And that we could also discover what will be the theme, the subject, and of course, the thesis statement. Okay? Okay, that's one, I'm so sorry. And the last thing to consider in understanding essay, but this is not really the last thing. Okay. So authorial voice. We believe that the speaker is very important in an essay. So while fiction has its narrator, poetry has its persona, how about for essay? Okay, for essay, we call it as the speaker. It is the authorial voice that you set in your writing, your POV or point of view. It sets the tone of your essay. So the authorial, authorial voice sets the tone of your essay. As Henry David Thoreau in his autobiography Walden said, in most books, the I or the first person is omitted. In this, it will be retained that it is in respect to egotism. 
is the main difference. We commonly do not remember that it is, after all, always the first person that is speaking. Of course, especially when it comes to essay. Because you yourself have written the whole thing, okay? I want to read the remaining sentences. I should not talk so much about myself if there were anybody else whom I knew as well. Unfortunately, I am confined to this theme by the narrowness of my experience. Moreover, I, on my side, require of every writer, first or last, a simple and sincere account of his own life, and not merely what he has heard of other men's lives. So what does it mean with that? So, it calls for originality. Because if it's your own experience, it means it's a first-hand experience that you could also share to the world. Okay, and you could be that confident because that is your experience. Okay, so in this module, you were able to identify the dominant literary conventions of essay. So I'll repeat, an essay is a non-fictional work in prose form. An essay has the same elements as other narrative works. The structure works of fiction, narrative poetry and drama, like the beginning, middle and end, is the introduction, body and conclusion. The theme in an essay is enclosed in the thesis statement. Depending on the theme and objective, an essay can be written in descriptive narrative, expository, or argumentative, persuasive form. Montaigne, recognized to be the progenitor of the word essay, is also considered the father of informal essay. I'll repeat, Montaigne is considered the father of informal essay. Okay, so whatever we're going to do, it says in 1 Peter 1.16, for it is written, be holy because I am holy. So whatever we're going to write later on, especially our experiences here on earth, we should remember that whatever we eat, drink, or whatever we're going to do, we should do it for the glory of God because he is holy as First Peter 1.16 has stated. So thank you so much for your time. And I hope that I have shared something for you to learn at this particular moment. So God bless and have a good day ahead.